friends, welcome to Our That Place and Praise. I'm kicking off this year with a tutorial on gel plate printing where I'll create unique paper designs like these. I'll teach you how to paint unusual patterns using non-traditional supplies you can find in your home like bottle corks, chopsticks, bubble wrap, and other easy to find tools. For this project, I'll be using a gel press a soft rubber brayer, which is like a roller with a handle, will need different colors of acrylic paint and paper. And the paint doesn't have to be superior grade paint like what I have here. Cheap dollar store craft paint will do just fine. As for the paper, I'm using some handmade paper with cotton content. You, you don't need fancy paper like this for jelly, uh, jelly printing. Any copy paper will do the trick as well. But I prefer to use this vintage looking paper because I plan to use uh, whatever we create here into collage papers for a vintage themed journal. Jelly printing is easy and fun. The steps are basic but the results can be pretty unpredictable and random. All you need to do is pick your color palette and squirt a small amount of paint on the gel plate. Then use your brayer to spread it around. Then put your paper on top to transfer the paper patterns on your paper. Basically that's everything. But in this video I'll show you some tips and tricks that I do to create my designs. First tip is that I don't waste paints. So I keep a sheet of paper handy and I wipe the excess paints from the brayer onto the paper. It's unbelievable how many happy accidents happen because of this. My intention is only to wipe the brayer, but this ends up creating designs, some of which turn out to be pretty and can be used later for further jelly printing. With this first design, I am creating an underpainting only. I'll be adding something more to this print later using a palette knife, but for now, I'll set this aside first and leave it to dry, then I'll come back to it in a while. For the second gel uh, print, I, I want to add texture using bubble wrap. Many artists who dabble in jelly plate printing use tools like stencils and decorative rubber stamps to add designs to their paper. You can do that as well. but. In this video, I want to show you that even if you don't have any budget for additional supplies like uh, stencils and whatnot, you, you can still improvise and pick up materials you already have in your home or maybe in your kitchen and do something creative with them. You can see from this second print that uh, the leftover blue paint from the first jelly print transferred as well. When I work, I don't wash my jelly plate after every application. If there are excess paints staining the surface, I just leave them there because those will add beauty to the next batch of prints. But after several prints, I wash my gel press because after a while when there are already so many pigments layered in, you'll be creating muddy prints unless you clean your tools. In this next jelly print, I'll be using a tiny disposable container, a stamping tool. The rim of this container can leave perfect circles. I, I encourage you to dig inside your cabinets for anything you can use for stamping. Keep an eye out for things with texture like maybe a wire mesh or a wad of crumpled paper. Later, I'll show you how to use uh, how I jelly print with a chopstick. By the way, when you're stamping, be gentle. Don't press down too hard on the soft jelly plate because uh, you don't want to damage it. And make sure that in picking a non-traditional stamping tool, you don't choose anything sharp that can slice the gel or maybe dig out holes on it. When, when I use the brayer, I also make sure I apply just a moderate amount of pressure to, to ensure that the pigments transfer to the paper. I'm not too heavy-handed that I squeeze the jelly plate. At this point, 
I want to go back to the first jelly print we made a while ago. I told you it was just an underpainting, right? And, and that uh, I'll touch up on it once it's dry. In this next trick, I want to go back in with a palette knife to add texture to the print. I'm sharing this technique with you because there will be times when you end up with a gel print that doesn't look nice. You might have created a print that you just want to throw away. I want to show you here that there's still hope for that piece of paper. All you have to do is load your palette knife with a drop of paint and run the flat side of the knife all over the surface of the paper. Do this repeatedly and you'll create something like this. For this next print, I cleaned up my jelly plate with a soap with soap and water to start fresh. In this next tip, I, I want to show you that you can run several prints from the same batch of paints and, and still create completely different designs. I applied a generous amount of paint to create waves and ripples on the jelly plate uh, as I run the brayer. Whatever excess paint accumulates on my brayer, uh, I wipe them on a clean sheet of paper, which I can still use later on to create another print. I was sifting through my kitchen drawer for things I can use for this project, and I found this tiny wire whisk, which I thought might be a cool stamping tool. You see, there's an element of play in the entire jelly printing process. It's a relaxing art form because you don't have to overanalyze it. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm just playing around with a wire whisk and using it to leave marks on the paint. The moment I pull off the paper for the big reveal, I, I only allow myself two kinds of reactions. One is, great, I love this. The other is, okay, this needs a bit more work. Like I said earlier, I don't want to waste supplies, so I try my best not to give up on any print that falls short of my expectations. Anyway, I forgot to mention, it may seem to you that I'm pulling off my sheets a bit too fast. I can only do this because the paper I'm using is a bit thicker and has cotton fibers mixed in with the pulp. But if you're using ordinary copy paper, you may have to go easy with the pulling. Otherwise, you, uh, you might run the risk of tearing your paper in unwanted places. I still have a few pigments left over in the gel press, so I, I didn't wash it yet. In this next print, I'll give you an idea on what you can do with chopsticks. If you're going to try this trick, make sure to use only a disposable chopstick, alright? And tap 
the chopsticks very lightly only. You don't want to poke on the gel press and accidentally dig a hole through it. You can create different patterns with chopsticks, not just vertical or horizontal lines. You can do cross hatches or diamonds too. Okay, now I've done several other prints using the same techniques and stamping tools I shared with you. What can we use these for? You might ask. Um, there are actually many projects for which these prints can come in handy. You can use these to embellish art journals. You can tear portions of these prints for collages. You can make these into personalized greeting cards or gift tags or junk journals. You can use these to decorate altered books or make them into a background for mixed media canvas projects. You can put them on uh, silico silicone uh, molds and add resin on them and turn them into coasters. There are actually a lot of possibilities. These prints can take the place of scrapbook paper if you don't want to spend money on buying scrapbook paper. In my case, I'll be making prayer journals out of these, so sometime in the future, you just might recognize these prints in another video.
All right, friends. That's it for now. I hope you enjoy this episode of Art That Place and Praise. Thanks for joining me. This is Ginger saying God bless you and have fun creating. <music>